Hello, I'm Nina Shrevinsky, and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them, and tell you everything you need to know. And tonight, we turn our sardonic gaze towards Russia, where the Kremlin is engaging in its usual shenanigans, proving once again that their brand of propaganda is as predictable as it is ludicrous. So let's begin with their latest obsession, the US presidential campaign. The Russians are keenly watching the drama unfold across the Atlantic, eager to exploit any opportunity. And boy, do they exploit it. From mocking Joe Biden at every turn to leveraging any political paralysis in Washington, the Kremlin is clearly having a field day. According to Russian pundits, Biden's every stumble and gaffe are not just fodder for jokes, but signs of a broader American decline. They claim to have secret intel on Biden's health, which, let's be honest, probably comes from the same high-quality sources that informed us about Iraq's WMDs back in the day. And also, with Biden now out of the picture and Kamala stepping in, they are probably in desperate need of new material, because the man is too old shtick probably won't cut it anymore. Now, Putin himself has hinted that a democratic administration is preferable due to its predictability. That's right, the man who thrives on chaos and destabilization finds comfort in knowing what his adversaries might do next. Ironically, it's the unpredictability of US politics that truly unnerves the Kremlin. They want chaos in Washington, but only the kind they can manage and manipulate. Meanwhile, Russia's number one inadvertent comedian Vladimir Solovyov dedicated a whole segment to mocking Kamala Harris. Apparently, her biggest flaw that they could find is her laughter. Yes, in a country where no one dares to laugh out loud for fear of being whisked away by the FSB, the sound of Kamala Harris enjoying a good chuckle is indeed deeply unsettling. Biden поддержал кандидатуру действующего вице-президента США Камалы Харрис. Интересно, что среди всего того, что перечислил в этом своем прощальном письме, он не вспомнил международные отношения и впервые, наверное, обошелся без упоминания Украины. Вот что со свойственным ему оптимизмом Дональд Фредерик Трамп хотел сказать, что наместник, по его мнению, наверное, Бога на земле, хотя... Говорил с моим близким другом Стивеном Сигалом, он говорит, нет, нет, он давно у себя уже богом считает. И я здесь не могу со Стивеном поспорить. А вот что сказал он про Камалу. Как только мы вернем себе Белый дом и отберем его у продажного Джоя Камалы, я зову ее хохотушка Камала. Вы слышали, как она смеется? Она сумасшедшая. По смеху человеку можно многое сказать. Она ненормальная. На всю голову. Так вот, эта веселушка-хохотушка, она же, когда назначили Джейди Венса, ну, выбрали его на должность помощника Трампа, идти рядом с ним, то она позвонила ему и сказала Камала, мол, а тут отправил ее на автоответчик, а она хотела вызвать его, соответственно, дебаты. Теперь дебаты могут быть и пожестче. Хотя, исходя из того, что происходит, я не исключаю развитие ситуации по сценарию, предсказанным давным-давно Жириновским. Уже Трамп снял лозунг «Сделаем Америку великой». Спасем Америку. Вот правильно, Трамп. Только не удастся тебе спасти Америку, ибо выборов в 2024 году в Америке не будет. Потому что Америки не будет. Значит, и выборов не будет. Пусть в гольф играет последние разы на этом гольф-поле. Oh my, they even brought out this political zombie. Anyway, let's be real, in Putin's Russia, humor is about as common as free elections. The man himself has never been seen cracking a genuine smile. We're talking about Putin, of course. His version of joviality 
is a grimace that suggests he's contemplating how to best invade a neighboring country, perhaps. A stone-faced leader with zero humor. Now, that's the true Moscow style. Although they do have a sense of humor, of sorts. World's second most powerful army is a joke that gets me every single time. Okay, so we've all heard about how we must make Russia pay, but how about making it literally not able to pay? It turns out that Ukrainian cyber specialists have launched a massive cyber attack on Russia's banking system. That's right, Raiffeisen Bank, VTB, Sabir Bank, Alpha Bank, and more have been hit so hard they have gone from open for business to error 404, bank not found. According to sources in Ukrainian intelligence, this cyber assault has halted or severely disrupted payment systems, mobile banking apps, and even public transportation payment systems across the Russian Federation. Imagine that. You're trying to hop on a bus in Moscow, but your payment app won't work because some guy in Kiev decided it was time to play who's got the best firewall. Russian users are complaining that they can't access digital services from nearly all major banks, including Sibir Bank, Alpha Bank, Raiffeisen Bank, VTB Bank, and even Gazprom Bank. That's right, the same people who brought you will freeze Europe to death with our gas are now struggling to keep their own banking apps from freezing. That is rather ironic. To add cherry on top, this cyber chaos is also affecting major mobile operators and internet providers across Russia. So not only can't you pay for anything, you can't even call your bank to ask what the hell is going on. It's almost poetic justice, really. The cyber version of what goes around comes around. So let's give a round of applause to the Russian government for their impeccable cybersecurity and resilience in the face of digital warfare. It's almost as if spending billions on propaganda doesn't actually make your country more secure. Who knew? According to a recent report, Russian authorities have decided that war should be the central theme of Russian culture. That's right, the Kremlin wants half of all state-commissioned works in 2024 and 2025 to promote traditional values and support the special military operation in Ukraine. Because, of course, nothing says cultural enrichment like state-sponsored propaganda about invading your neighbor. Documents from the president's administration reveal that they want war to be the new framework for Russian culture, with films about the heroes of the Ukrainian invasion set to mimic Marvel movies. Yes, Marvel movies. Because when you think of Iron Man, for example, you naturally think of tank columns rolling into Donetsk, right? Even some of the titles might actually work. Infinity War sounds about right, as does Spider-Man No Way Home, because Russian troops sent to the front lines hardly ever come home. Now, the plan even includes sending writers to the front lines to pen books about liberating cities and the daily lives of legendary combat units. Apparently, the head of the presidential administration's public projects directorate, Sergei Novikov, is orchestrating this cultural makeover. You might remember him as the guy who faked blood test results after the poisoning of Alexei Navalny and intimidated journalists investigating Kremlin officials. And now he wants a Putin cinematic universe. And I'm quite sure this idea is going to bomb, pun intended. But it doesn't stop there. Russia is gearing up to lead a global movement of disgruntled traditionalists. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov recently suggested creating an international platform to protect traditional values, citing examples like Elon Musk moving to Texas to escape neoliberal values in California. Because fleeing progressive policies is exactly the same as endorsing a regime that suppresses dissent and wages unprovoked wars. I heard that this initiative is creating an international platform to protect traditional values. It is also our очень сильная сторона. И э, многие на Западе, э, вот, Илон Маск из Калифорнии переезжает в Техас, потому что в Калифорнии э, неолиберальные ценности уже зашкаливают. И он такой не один. И много людей, в том числе в Европе, хотят сбежать от этого наступления ЛГБТ-сообщества. To recap, Russia is turning war into its cultural touchstone, pushing propaganda to new heights and attempting to position itself as the global champion of traditional values. 
It is almost impressive in its delusion, isn't it? Almost. And with this, we conclude this episode of Break the Fake. Stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and updates.